We are here, finally, in the finals of the Memphis TCG Masters Regional. We've had a long, grueling day one, nine rounds, eight more additional ones in day two. Here we are, round 17, down to two people, Gustavo Wada and Daniel Altavilla. Oh yeah, it's definitely been a long day, but it hasn't been a boring one. We've seen a variety of decks on stream, out in the out in the crowds and stuff, and it's honestly been pretty interesting. We, I definitely think this tournament has kind of uh, tilted the cap as far as a lot of new decks coming out here. We've seen, we saw Magnezone, we saw Passimian, we saw Sylveon, a lot of different stretches here than what we've seen in the previous, and now we are down to two Malamar Psychic decks fighting away for the championship here. So this deck was around since the beginning of summer and stuff. We saw it in a couple of regionals of last season. So despite all the new things out on the floor, this deck isn't necessarily quite so new, but we do have a couple new spicy techs in there. We do have the Chimeco that we've seen a couple people different play. We saw Daniel play with that last game. Definitely came in super clutch. And against this matchup, I really think that could swing some things. Absolutely here. And it looks like the players are underway. Daniel getting the first go at it here and starts with what you mentioned there, that <laughs> Chimeco. Ready to put in work here in a mirror match. All right, this is going to be super fiddle. I mean, if Gustavo gets those Inkays down and can't evolve him, that just gives Daniel all the room to just do what he did last game. And it's even more of a halt that Malamars he come out last game, and that was game changing. And it's even more of a halt that he has an Necrozma GX already inactive. So I think it's going to need three energy to even take a KO on the Chimico. So he's going to have to find an alternative to hit that weakness on the Chimico and uh, get rid of that threat so he can evolve to those Inkays. All right, and we see that one ink out. Looks like Ultra Ball is going to be played. We got that Psychic Energy. Of course, get that in the discard pile while you have that opportunity. And a Lele opting to put that into his discard instead of benching it, getting another supporter. He must have the supporter in hand then. We're going to see very similar turns here as far as, you know, turn one Lily and getting out as many Inke as possible. But right now, Daniel with a slight upper hand. Chimico, Bella Silence, going to jingling. All over uh, Gustavo's board, scaring away any Pokemon with abilities, keeping them in the hand. All right, this is not the deck that I've played or been too familiar with, but I'm assuming the key in the mirror is just Calamari Party. Both Calamar sides. Calamari Party, no lunch special, just everybody gets a piece. <laughs> Whoever's buffet runs out first is done. I like it, I like it. But only two ink cases on Daniel's side of the board. On to Gustavo, 12-2-2, uh, Daniel 11-0-5, no losses yet. Lunala Prism Star coming right to the bench. I mean, that is definitely something that Daniel does not have in his list. It could help him get that energy out on board, especially if that Chimeco is going to deny him the opportunity of evolving his Malamar up. Yeah, uh, Lunala Prism Star having a unique, uh, really unique effect. One is a Prism Star Pokemon, so you only play one copy of it. And once that card is discarded, uh, knocked out, it goes to the Lost Zone and never to be able to come back into play again. Uh, but... Full Moon Star for each of your opponent's Pokemon in play. Attach a Psychic Energy from your discard pile to one, to your Pokemon in any way you like. So while both players do need to load up their bench, Gustavo has the option here to, I mean, I have Malamars out, but I can load all the way through Lunala. Oh, yeah. So looks like it might be, oh, no. He looks like he has that Ultra Ball in hand. It's not going to be the only Pokemon he puts down on his bench. One thing you want to know also is Lunala, while it is a Psychic type attacker, it is not weak to Psychic. It is weak to Dark. So we're going to have to keep that in mind here in this matchup that uh, Daniel's going to use a GX Pokemon to take a KO on it because of that. 160 HP, weak this to nothing inside of Daniel's deck. So this is definitely going to be an interesting matchup we're going for. Well, it does require four Psychic Energy on that, though, to be able to attack. So if he wants to have that out as potentially an attacker, not being hit for weakness, the one prizer. A little bit of a hefty attack loss there. Absolutely there. Let loose coming down here. Gustavo doing the first move. Uh, one to try to slow down Daniel here, but we mentioned this before with these Malamar decks. They love it. Let loose me. I dare you. I'm going to get to my Lily. I got four Mysterious Treasure. I got four Ultra Balls. I'm not going to have a problem finding my Lele. Oh, yeah, and hopefully with that let loose, he can let those Inkays loose on his bench, start filling up that space. Though, if that Chimeco is still active, it might not prove... Be too useful for him, at least not quite yet. Oh, really? Polar opposite side of Gustavo here. No Inkays, just the Lunala, Marshado, and Necrozma. Not what you want to see. And Necrozma also weak to Psychic. So Chimico here, <laughs> funny enough, can Bella Silence with 20 damage if you wanted to. But uh, right now, there's Daniel's going to be in a good spot. Good at Chimico, Bella Silence, and just set up Inkays so the party's ready to go. 
in that friend ball. I I personally think we should be seeing friend ball in more decks. You fully agree. Like any type that your opponent has in play, you get to pick a Pokemon of that same type from your deck. And Tapu Lele is one of the biggest cards in the game. As long as your opponent has one of those on the bench, you can get your own Tapu Lele, unpunished, super clutch and psychic decks such as these. You can get any Pokemon you want, basically. Pretty much there. I fully agree. The friend ball, definitely an underrated and underused ball search card here. And Dan will take a full advantage of it as he's playing the same type of deck. Psychic there was able to get a Malamar. And we're going to see the first psychic recharge onto this Deoxys. All right. When did he get that Deoxys in play? Was that just through, just from hand? I think it was from the Let Loose there. Um, we might have seen a Mysterious Treasure, but uh, the glare on the screen is making it a little hard to see what's in that discard pile. All right. Play has been super nice, but those shiny cards, as pretty as they are, does not make our jobs any easier over here. Malamar, number two, coming down. Could be seeing, see, it's a lot of different choices here. Let Loose from Daniel's side as well. So um, one thing to note right now is that Daniel has not attached energy yet. So if he gets the energy off of this Let Loose and has two to discard, he can double second recharge, attach the Deoxys, and then Power Blast for the KO on the Necrozma GX. No chance of return on Gustavo's board. I don't think we had the chance to really see what Gustavo is going to be drawing into. And if he, he doesn't get anything spicy and his Necrozma gets taken out, he's going to be left in a little bit of a pinch here. Might be forced to attack with that Lunala. It looks like there might just be only one energy in a discard for Alta Villa. So I'm curious if he's going to be able to, yep, or Corio. Vital Dance, search your deck for two uh, energy cards, place them in your hand, and maybe you could Ultra Ball one away to be able to power up that Psychic Recharge. Awesome. And he does have that Ultra Ball too, and a third energy in hand that he's holding on to for now. Discard those energy. Ultra Bottle Psychic Energy is right on cue, and it looks like we might be seeing that play right now, that Power Blast coming in strong with the Deoxys here, if Daniel opts to do so. I'm just going to put that Mimikyu in hand, so we'll surely see a retreat here. I mean, he's not going to solo too much longer. Yep, All right. Psychic Recharge 1, number 2, is Energy in hand? Yes, it is. And attached for three, and you're out of here. Puts that Lunala as active with the one energy on it, but with only, I'm not sure, Gustavo, how many energy he has in his discard. I haven't been quite keeping too track of that, but if he doesn't have attacker on the bench to put them on, he will be forced to put them on that Lunala. He can't put a full three on there. He's not even going to be able to attack with it. So we do see the uh, one EK coming down, um, but Lunala going to hopefully, if you can get enough energy to discard like you were saying there, um, really use that fact that a full Moon Star. But uh, fortunately for him, it is weak to dark. He can't survive a blow from Deoxys right now. Uh, so, but we'll see what Gustavo gets here off of this Lily to six. So we do see Lunala and some psychic decks for the full Moon Star. But the size storm in the mirror match could prove to be quite useful later on. So it is for energy, 20 times the amount of energy attached to all Pokemon. And it's going to have Psychic Weakness to boot, and Lunala doesn't have a Psychic Weakness. That actually could make quite the difference here. Yeah, definitely no joke of an attack right now. We saw him use it against Rayquaza earlier in the rounds where Rayquaza had a full steam, a strong charge is going, and dropped Lunala Star, size storm, did a whole bunch of damage mm -hmm. on the Rayquaza right there. But... Looks like he decides to full moon start up to the uh, Lunala there. Hard retreat to Deoxys. <laughs> He's going to Bella silence him. He's not letting Gustavo get these Malamars out at all. Like I said, Ferris Buffet runs out first, is out of here, and he's going to keep his Malamar safe and sound on his bench. Gustavo does have those two Inkes in play, but if he is Kamekoin again, he's not going to have that opportunity to evolve those up. All right, he just goes ahead and takes the side storm KO on Chimico right now. One prize, and there's still no immediate threat on Daniel's side to take out this Lunala Prism Star. So I think Gustavo's going to get a little bit of uh, a little bit of time out of this Lunala and get the full effect of it uh, to keep going here in this game. All right, so we see, do see that Mimikyu down. So that will be able to copy the Lunala's attack here, though it is not going to be hitting for weakness. Quick energy account. I don't. It's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough right now. This looks like it's going to be, uh, he, did, he did not remove it yet, yet oh. so. It's all Pokemon, so he might be able to get some Psychic Recharge 
onto his bench and be able to swing for the appropriate amount. Yes. So so he also just need just uh, eight energy total. So there's two already on the Mimikyu. And yep, two psychic recharges will be able to get him to that magical eight number. Um, and he might already be there even with just one retreat from the Deoxys there. One, two, three, four, four already in Lunala. Copycat, Side Storm, taking out the Lunala and Prism Star. Good call there, Sierra. All right, and I think that is what we're going to see here. Yeah, he's doing a quick energy count. He promotes that Mimic Q. And he actually gets another one on, on that Deoxys as well, preparing for the next turn. And we see that knockout on that Lunala there. Promotes the Marsh Shadow as is active. So I'm not sure what else uh, Gustavo could do at this point right now. Uh, yes, he can evolve the Malamars, but because of the trade right now, Danny's also playing really smart and not benching any GX attackers. So there is no real catch up here for Gustavo, uh, Gustavo right now. So uh, it's going to be blow for blow, but right now being two prizes ahead, Daniel in the driver's seat in this game one. 100%. So he does get both of those Malamars evolved, puts a Deoxys on his bench as well, gets the psychic energies onto his Deoxys. Guzma is the Deoxys in this for in this case here. All right, psychic gonna be the attack of choice here. Nice. Hit it get for like ex it. four, um, 20, 40, 60, 80, 160 damage for the KO on Deoxys. Though that Mimikyu getting promoted as active, it does still have that two energy on it. That can so be s super dangerous for Gustavo here. Actually. Mimikyu is going to be able to copycat Psychic again for the KO. It's 20 plus 20, so um, trade for trade, blow for blow right now. These Psychic attackers are going at each other, and um, Daniel right now in the lead. I don't think we've seen, seen a single two-prize attacker all game. No, and I mean, it's probably going to be the strategy between both players here because that's going to be the trick to get ahead. Um, actually, the Cross and GX in the beginning, that was probably mm -hmm. the most crucial knockout right now because without that, Gustavo would actually be ahead 4-5. to five. Oh, 100%. Didn't really get too much use in that active spot. Not a situation he wanted to find himself in, and of course Daniel did get the perfect startup with that Kameko. I mean, that puts Gustavo back. His own start gets to put him back. Just an uphill battle from here, and he's been doing pretty well, but unfortunately it looks like he is is going to be sweeping this one. Yeah, and unfortunate for him is that Daniel was the one that was able to go first on game one to be able to prioritize that Chimico and disrupt the board on Gustavo's side. Gustavo will get to go first here, but even if he gets to win, Daniel will have the option game three yet again to sh prioritize that Chimico and really, you know, use that strategy he used in this game one just now. That was definitely a rough one because, I mean, you got to go first to get your setup, but kind of puts you a little bit back. Almost... Almost a little tempting to go second to deny him that opportunity, but at the end, it really is not. He'd be able to get all of his stuff down. Mm -hmm. You're still good. you're a turn behind either way. Yeah, we're definitely probably going to see um, the main strategy between these guys is to, and they both have outs to it in different ways. Danny tends to go through Chimico, then let loose and set up his board, versus Gustavo has the Mimikyu to Felge uh, and has, uh, you know, the Ox to kind of wall as well. So uh, he, that's kind of his out to wall behind. Uh, to get going here. So hopefully in this instance here, Gustavo can really explode, get some inks on board, and then let loose. And hopefully that does slow down Danny here, uh, and maybe he'll miss the pieces just as Gustavo did from the let loose he did to himself. All right, so we're still shuffling up, getting ready. It'd be such a shame here if we have two games in a row just opening a GX. It's going to be no use to him. Uh, it, it, I would like to see a clean game here. Both players be able to play their, their decks to their full strength. Um, this would be I think that was third game in a row where it wasn't an optimal start for one player between the two Lele's in top four and now the Necrosma GX. So hopefully Gustavo getting what he needs here to start. Inke. Oh ah! boy, yikes. Fortunately, is weak to dark. However, it's still a two-prize attacker that you don't want. You hate seeing your one-ofs here. They're one-ofs for a reason. You only need it in certain instances, <laughs> not in the active spot at the start of your game. Oh, goodness. At least he does have an Inke to be putting on his bench, if anything, honestly. Yikes. Yeah, <laughs> last last match, I mean, that two prizes right at the beginning, that definitely it, it's put gonna, it all into Daniel's court there. It's going to be a hindrance if uh, for him having it there. However, this one in particular has the effect of Moon Eclipse GX. So if for some reason Danny makes a, uh, takes a quick dunk out of Inke and he can load up this, uh, Gustavo can load up his Necrozma, he can use that GX attack to get two good knockouts out of it before it being KO'd. He just needs to start getting those energy in here now. And that's also provided he doesn't um, get that Chimeco out, hit that escape board, pull mm -hmm. it right back up, and just deny him that opportunity to even get those Malamars out there. Absolutely. 
Um, Lily was the supporter that was played ultra ball, two second energy to the to the bin, and probably gonna eye down another Inke. Up, oh, there's the let loose Ooh. right on cue. So he has two Inkes. Um, couldn't see where that last card was played. Might have been a mysterious treasure. Uh, looks like he discarded a Necrozma GX and grabs like a Lunala. Everybody just throwing their mysterious treasure right in their discard. Don't even give us the opportunity to see it. So this is what we need to see here. You know, strong strong effort getting the Inkes out. Got the Lunala out, as, which is pretty much like a pseudo Malamar in itself. And then let loose to hopefully disrupt Danny's side of the board to be able to secure this game two victory. Right. You're shuffling up. Yeah, this this could be huge, getting that first turn Mars Shadow. If Daniel can't get all those pieces to deny Nuk Gustavo, he can just start loading up those Malamars and getting those pieces to the puzzle to take Daniel right out of this. All right, let loose John four here. Keep in mind, Gustavo already played a supporter. Um, Acrobike. With that psychic energy, almost every time. Yep, yeah, it's, it's the great use of Acrobike there, being able to put those second energies to the bin. Looks like one's going to come active to the Don Wings, the Krasma, and probably a pass. All right, fifth card. We get our first little look. Looks like he might have had a Cynthia in hand. Can't be quite sure, though. Looks like it might be a Lily. Ooh. Oh, Cynthia, you're right. And you he does get that <laughs> escape board. Benches another NK. Oh, and he gets it. He, Everything My man he got NK. Chimeco, Psychic Energy, Skateboard, and the Cynthia. I, I think every game we've had him on stream so far, he has had that Chimeco each time in that turn one. Yeah. He's letting loose that Havoc on Gustavo now. Going to get that Chimeco out and active. Deny him that opportunity even get his Malamar set up. He's going to have to rely on that Lunal if he wants to get that energy on board. And just manually attach to that Dawn Wings. You know, fortunately enough, he was able to get a fair amount of energy into this card and get that Lunala on board. So uh, while he may be stalled out here um, through the Bell of Silence, he will be able to uh, reevaluate, reassess, and get energy on his board uh, in the form of Lunala. All right. So he does have the regular Necrozma in hand. Probably get rid of that. And he does have his own Marshadow as well. Though whether he's going to play it or not, not quite sure. Looks like Gustavo only has three cards in his hand. So, I mean, that's not really going to be helping him too much. He puts that Kameko active. And, oh, ooh, nope, not quite sure. He has that friend ball. Not sure when he wants to be playing it. Could be saving it just for his next hand to have that Marshadow. Yeah, he might have been thinking about, do I want to hold us to get my next Balmar now? But I think I want to get another Inke down. I really want to overpower my side of the field and, uh, you know, get my board set up there. So he may already have a supporter too for next turn. So um, do this bell of silence, get the NK down, wall behind it for a bit, and then establish your board to get set up. Oh yeah, he every time Daniel has overpowered his board, it has not steered him wrong. So I'm not <laughs> surprised. He's going to be taking that same strategy, and he puts that Marshadow down. Gustavo kind of showed uh, Daniel his hand after that uh, let loose there as, as he knew he was eyeing it. and saw just Mysterious Treasure, Mysterious Treasure, Psychic Energy. So um, he would have been forced to get a Tapu Lele to draw the next turn if he didn't top deck a supporter. So uh, hopefully this let loose puts a little extra love in Gustavo's hand here so we can keep this game two going. Tapu Lele wouldn't have even done him any good with that Chimeca out in play. You he are correct have, there. He'd been sitting on a dead hand. I think Daniel just did him a favor. So we did get to see what is in either player's hand, but Bell of Silence coming through, and we are on to Gustavo's turn. And he's got a Cynthia. It looks like he's got a couple, couple of things in there, so it looks like that let loose just helped him out. But, I mean, he helped, him, he helped Daniel out last turn <laughs> with his let loose, so... So one thing you guys at home want to kind of keep in mind here is why he played the Nest Ball versus playing the Inke first. He wanted to, one, play one additional card down to limit his deck down. Thinning it is what a lot of people like to say um, and expend those resources that he won't need in the later game. Uh, and actually could even grab the Inke out of his deck if he opted to. But want to get rid of that card uh, so that when he does play the Cynthia, he does not see it again. Yeah, especially with a bench of five, he wouldn't even be able to play it again for a deck check. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So he's got three NKs, two which he could theoretically evolve, but he is a little bit stuck for now. Not with that um, Dawn Wings, he wouldn't even be able to get that out of the active unless he does have a switch in hand for that Lunala. So yeah, if he, he can get that Lunala active, that'd be pretty nice for him. Yeah, uh, fortunately enough, the, uh, well, it looks like he oh, did a... 
Skateboard? A skateboard and manual retreat. Because I was going to say, uh, Dongwee's Necrozma is pretty heavy. Got a three retreat cost there. So even with the skateboard, it will still need two energy to retreat. But now that is a flood of energy into Discarpathu Gustavo. So uh, on the next turn, if this Lunala does not go down, we will see a full Boon Star for a bunch of energy. Fortunate he couldn't get the energy right there just to, just to have those multiple turns with getting that energy. But... I don't really see a way that Daniel can be knocking that out unless he just devotes a bunch of resources, drops a GX, and just to take out a Lunala, I don't really think it's worth it. Yeah, I definitely agree that. I don't think it's just worth it there. Um, but uh, we'll see uh, how, what Daniel progresses with here. Uh, I and his options out, he was looking at his discard pile to see how many second energies he uh, he has as far as uh, for the effect of him for moon, full Moonstar. Right, so he does Mysterious Treasure, get rid of the Dawn Wings. Deciding he only has one of the Malamars evolved, then he has two more Inkes just chilling on the bench there. No need to be dropping a GX or a really heavy attacker, as long as he can just stall him out. He does take that Interesting. Play. Oh. He must really want to draw support if he wants to bench this uh, two prize attacker in the form of Tapu Lele. But uh, you got to set up, even, even if it comes at a risk of putting the... Uh, giving your opponent an out, an opening. Oh, that's so dangerous. Gustavo could theoretically here get an energy on that Lunala, set up his board, use it in that Lele, provided um, Daniel takes a knockout on one of his Pokemon in the meantime. Moon Just Eclipse, take out that Lele, and then be immune for another that's turn. That's exactly what I'm saying. I think, that the, I think the sequence Gustavo is now just immediately thought in his mind is I could full Moon Eclipse, put all his energies on the Dawn Wings, and then Guzma, and now I'm going to be immu immune. Uh, to any threats on Danny's side. Uh, so, uh, we do see a Lily, though. Ultra Ball for a Malamar. Looks like he dropped some of his cards there. Yeah, even if he opted not to kill that Lunala, that Lunala, I mean, it's hitting for 20 times all the energy in play. That could be doing some pretty devastating damage in itself. All right, just shuffling up here. Nice. Right, Bell Silence once again. Back over to Gustavo's turn here. Uh, we want to, unfortunately, he won't be able to get any Malamars down right now, but he does have the second energy. Uh, no, he does not have the second energy in hand to be able to uh, full Moon Star. So, um, unless he has some kind of draw support to get there. Uh, I saw Guzma in that hand, but I didn't necessarily see a draw support. So, sure. opting to shuffle back the Malamar and the Necrozma GX. <laughs> Interesting enough, it looks like he probably wants that Necrozma GX for the later game there. I figure he may have won it in the discard pile for... Um, you know, to kind of avoid putting the GX attackers down there. But once in the deck, he probably has to try a plan for it later on. All right. Is that a Lily for two we saw there? Or Lily, Lily for not two, but more for a Little. few. More for a few. And Acrobite coming down. Can't see we discarded, but there's the energy he needed to be able to full Moonstar. He's going to be able to grab six energy of all are available to him there in the discard pile. So it looks like just four. I mean, um, four is still better than what he has going on his board right now. <laughs> absolutely there. So probably going to see the three go to the, uh, ooh, he's, he's having an interesting choice here. Um, you could put them all on the Lunala uh, or opt to go to the Dawn Wings Necrozma. And I actually like that. Uh, let's go ahead and get this Dawn, Dawn Wings going and save Lunala to be able to sweep her for later in the game. All right. So, yeah, he will still need two energy attachment on that Lunala if he wants to attack. But at least he has that Dawn Wings set up. And mm -hmm. that Dawn Wings is dangerous. It's telling Daniel that if he wants to take out one of his Inkays or that Lunala. I'm curious what it's going to be like. Right a back. I wonder if Gustavo's going to go after the Lele here because the Guzman's going to go after a Malamar. But it looks like um, Scape Rope being played and Gustavo bringing up Mark Shadow. Uh, and Lele on Daniel's side. All right. And then he manly retreats to that Lele. And then Lily's. Three cards. Um, full five, actually, it looks like. Looks like we're going to be in a situation that we saw kind of uh, in the round before. Uh, in top, sorry, top eight, where um, Gustavo had a full bench of useless stuff. Like, he really didn't have any attackers. So, right now, what Gustavo can do, if played correctly, can really just get energies down slowly and surely there before um, going after Daniel's side. Because right now, Daniel only has a Lele that's really an immediate threat to attack anything on his side. Right. At least with Mark Shadow having a retreat cost of one, I believe, he could manually retreat that. Or he's just going to skateboard it and just put that Dawn Wings out right now, vying to take down one of those Malamars in play. 
Gustavo answering the questions for us there, deciding that the Malamar is more valuable in this mirror match versus going after the Tapu Lele. I think what he sees here is that Tapu Lele is going to always be there for KOs. So let me get this, the setup Pokemon down and out the way, and uh, I'll take care of Lele when the time comes. Yeah, getting himself out of a situation like game one where Daniel just had all the Malamars, all the answers, said he's just targeting them down. Well, he still has his own in case, three of them intact on his board, just ready to be evolved when he gets that opportunity. Daniel could do a, uh, uh, it almost be worth it. He looks like he has the Mimikyu in hand and could copycat the GX attack to no damage, but then he's immune himself the next turn. A little more cute than actual useful. Uh, but the, the Mimikyu is in hand if he wants to go uh, that route. Oh. May want to Felch, get additional cards if his hand is weak as well. Um, but going to Hard Retreat, bring up the Lele yet again. Copycat, or sorry, uh, Psychic Recharge. He is going to put them onto that Mimikyu, and he has that option to manually retreat off of that. Instead decides. Oh, so he is going to be able to um, copycat. No, he's copycat the 120 attacks, what it looks like since uh, Gustavo did not use a GX attack during his turn. Okay. I mean, he wouldn't be able to hit for knockout on that Dawn Wings anyways. He would just be hitting it, and Gustavo would still have three of the NKs on his bench. So Gustavo's taking his setup down. Daniel's taking his back down as well. So we're at even prizes now. Um, Gustavo bringing Dawn Wings across the back to the active here. Malamar to the front. Um, Going to see a KO on the Malamar, and Danny just down two. One Malamar left to work with for the remainder of game two, unless we see some rescue stretcher action. And if only that Dawn Wings had a psychic weakness here, that Mimikyu would just destroy it. But instead, just playing around with the squids, puts out another NK. Hesitating, but he is ultimately going to be taking the KO on that as well. So Gustavo as well now only has the one in play, and it's not even evolved. This is definitely a very interesting goal right now. Trade for trade, Guzman for Guzman going on right now on these Inkays. And it looks like Daylon has now the upper hand again, having the one Malamar already set up, and then the Inkay on the board for whenever it is ready to turn into the Malamar. Um, so going back to it, that Chimico, it is putting in work on Gustavo's board. Oh yeah, Daniel does have that Malamar set up with that NK, but Gustavo does have that energy on board, including to the Dawn Wings, which is not going to be hit for weakness, and to the Lunala, which is going to be doing a scary amount of damage once he gets that fourth energy online there. It's and going he doesn't even know those Malabars, especially with that like out. It's going to be a weird chess, ma a chess match going here forward because um, if Daniel really wants to KO that Lunala, he's going to have to prioritize a GX attacker, whether it's Necrozma GX or Machado for the Necrozma GX, um, or even a Dawn Wings there to, you know, take down that threat, but in doing so, the other Dong Wings on Gustavo's side can actually come in and take the KO as well. So, um, interesting enough, I'm curious how Daniel's going to approach this going forward, but Dark Flash coming in, taking out the Milamar for they, the KO. They have to be running out of Guzmas now. All, all we've seen is Guzma, Malamar, Guzma, Ink. They got to be running low. They're going to have to have a couple of other tricks up their sleeve here. Well, they're both maxed out on it. Both play, actually, no, they only plays three Guzma versus Gustavo playing four. So um, Gustavo may have a few left here after those two plays. Okay, so that Mimikyu coming out once again with that copycat attack. Good swing for that 120. <laughs> Just trying to hit it. I mean, Gustavo can't get that GX attack online quite yet, not until Daniel takes two more prizes here. Honestly, what we could probably see here is that if uh, Gustavo has one more Guza, I would say go ahead and KO the Lele with either Lunala or actually do KO it with the with the Dawn Wings here and use that GX attack for the KO. I mean, he and now can't, He can't KO it uh, yet. That's right. You have to, you have to be uh, behind on prizes there. So um, Lunala, pretty close to being able to do so. Actually should be there. Three on the active, four on itself. That's seven. Yeah, so there's plenty of energy on board right now to KO with the Lunala Prism Star if he wants to do so. Um, and save the Dawn Wings for uh, uh, the final blow on any of his 90s attackers. Uh, so there's definitely potential there for Gustavo to close this game out. Oh yeah, especially if he takes that Lele, he's, it's only one more prize that he needs. Everything on the board mm -hmm. would be a KO with that Dawn Wings. He could just save that right up his sleeve. Uh, Danny Ionis options here. See a Rescue Stretcher. Um, I'm not sure with that hand what he could exactly do. He's going to copy cap, uh, copy Dark Flash, attack for the 120 on the on the Don Wings Necrozma. All right, so we see another Guzma in play here and get that Lele knocked out. I don't really know what Daniel could do. Benches another Inkay, his hand through. 
Yeah, it looks like he has a Cynthia in hand, but I'm not sure if he has the Kuzma or not. So I think he's going through and uh, asking, um, going through and asking if uh, he, they're asking something. Sorry about that. But he's going through and just baiting if he wants to go ahead and maybe hard retreat this Dawn Wings and conserve it for later and go ahead and do a new recharge. Um, but we'll see here Tapalita coming down with a one attack ability. We are going to see a Cynthia here. And skateboard on that Lele. We're going to shuffle the cards back into the deck. So the ultimate choice here is if um, Gustavo's going to take the used uh, Dusk uh, Dawn Wings here to KO on the Mimikyu. Um, but then when it gets returned KO, that is three energies going to the discard pile, weakening the power of Lunala Prism Star for the sweep. I mean, he can't hard retreat the Dawn Wings either, else it's just going to have the same effect, those energies exactly. in the discard not doing him any good. He needs those on board. And, yeah, he tried to try to evolve that NK up, forgetting that he did play it down this turn. But he can have it next turn. I don't really think it's Dan Daniel's favor anymore to be getting the Kameko out. He does uh. retreat here. He does retreat here. Uh, looks like, yep, so the Don, the Don Wings does have the two retreat costs. Lunala has the three. So only having to discard one energy because of escape board and so Psy Storm taking a KO. Enough energy on board for that Lele next turn. He so wishes. So if Gustavo has the Gooseman hand here, we'll see a second recharge to the Don Wings. And uh, still, be sh uh, still be short there. Probably hard retreat it and uh, bring up the, 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 uh, the, the Don Wings. Hard retreat it and a KO with the Lunala for potential game here. But uh, he's probably just going to sit in the active spot with Lunala, honestly. There's not really much going on on Daniel's side, and he can just kind of steamroll through uh, using Psy Storm. All right, yeah. So Gustavo does need two more prizes. Oh, he drops that. Mm, e he's thinking about it. Uh, he drops that Mars Shadow. Ooh. I mean, I feel like that's a really easy game for Gustavo here. I think he's showing uh, showing off the ability. He has KO on that Mars Shadow since he just ba benched it and trying to show that it is going to be a game over. Oh, and Daniel knows it. Daniel just takes it. I mean, technically, if he had another Mars Shadow, he could have tried to let loose, mm -hmm. get rid of that. But, I mean, he saw that there was no point, and he just scoops it up. I mean, in reality, there, I think Daniel was since he's behind a prize that he could have pulled the non wings GX play uh, if it wasn't discard pile. But I think it was it was not, so he was unable to pull that off with the Mar Shadow and be null uh, from the, the attack from the Guzma play on the Gustavo side. But as the final should be, game three, getting to the nitty gritty, crunch time, 43 minutes left on the clock here. I would just love to know why he benched that. I mean. Just wondering if he thought he needed that attacker out there or what. But he must have known that it was an easy target. Not not too sure uh, what the thought was there, uh, especially if that Don Wings was not already in a discard pile to do a, a little bit of a stall tactic there. Um, however, um, it, it must have not been for Dale to opt to scoop his cards up, uh, given that Gustavo showed him the psychic and Guzma. They're both friends. Uh, I want to say it's more of like any kind of pressuring tactic there. They're both kind of... They both know each other, they both respect each other, and want to get this game going here as they're both on the line for $5,000 here. Of course. Plus, it's been a long day. No need to drag it out if they don't have to. Absolutely here. Um, both players still shuffling away here, getting set up here for this Game 3 matchup here. Um, Daniel gets the upper hand again on that turn one, going first. All I'm right. going to venture to say we're going to see that Chimico come through here right there in the turn one if, if uh, history repeats itself. Every time, every time, just when you think they don't have it, bam, there it is. Chimico comes out, Bell of Silence. And hopefully we are not going to see Gustavo start with a GX for the third time in a row. I know. I, I'm hoping the variance could be in his favor in this one, man. We want to we want to see something uh, a, a little a little less stout in that active spot there. Maybe a, maybe an Inke, maybe a, oh, yeah. even, even a Mark Shadow. Is this a, or even a Mimikyu, whatever it is it may be, but not a Lele or a, a Don Wings Necrozma. Oh, yeah, Daniel's getting those optimal setups, or, like, the optimal starts every single time. Gustavo is just the uphill battle, and he does get that in K2 start. And a Deoxys There time. we go. Swap it up a little. That's awesome to see. Off to the races, Daniel goes. Acrobatic, easy choice. In K or Psychic Energy. Eh, Psychic Energies. We don't need that just yet. <laughs> nah. That can just go in the trash where it belongs. I'm just kidding. All right, so he does have that nest ball, plays it. I'm sure just another ink K. Get those all out there, of course. Does have that Cynthia in hand. And 
Do you have oh. Cynthia? No, he has Lily a skateboard. So I think what he's deciding here is, do I want to hold his Mysterious Treasure and get the Mars Shadow? Or do I want to grab it now, discarding those two cards, then uh, Lily? But he opts to get the Deoxys? Uh, he seems kind of unsure. Maybe because he already has Ultra Ball in hand, he knows he can guarantee the Mars Shadow at any time. Um, okay. Or Corio instead get those okay. like, energies for, yeah, ooh, yeah. for that Ultra Ball. For that the Ultra Ball. Spicy. Set. You know, uh, uh, pro plays here. Now get the Deoxys here. Uh, but now we're coming back to that point where we're referencing in uh, game two. Clogging that bench up. Now leaving much room for um, any additional uh, attackers there. But Deoxys, three Malamar. Uh, can't be, can be uh, enough here for to take this game right now. And still one more space for a let loose Mars Shadow if need be. Oh, yeah. And hitting for weakness as well. He doesn't need to give any big hitters. He can just have that Deoxys mm -hmm. out. Hit for that weakness. Just be putting that pressure on. And he gets that Lily for eight. The full, fresh, and clean Lily for eight. Seeing way too many first turn Lilies today. But, and that's that's the power the of the card. You got. I mean, everyone loves that card. A lot of people are playing the four count of it. It's so easily accessible, especially when you play those high counts. And in his Malamar decks, you have infinite search for it through Child on the Leleys, Mysterious Treasure, Ultra Ball, whatever it may be. Very fully. All right. He gets that escape board on his active ink as well. Attaches the energy to the Deoxys on board. And it is Gustavo's turn. He's getting that... First, it looked like a mysterious treasure. I'm not quite sure. Um, looks like he's getting that first NK out, though. Taking a quick little look at Daniel's discard pile. Nothing too interesting there. It attaches. Does he have a Lily energy. on his side as well? Yes, he does. Not for the full eight, but still a powerful every six time, cards. Every time. Every time with the Lily. <laughs> Very powerful supporter here in the Sun and Moon on format that everyone's gravitating to for their consistency in the support draw. Acrobike, uh, dishing away uh, tap Lele to the discard pile and grabbing a nest ball to get an additional ink gate to the board. Um, but one thing we have not seen that we've seen pre previously in these turn ones is a let loose Marshadow. We haven't seen one at either player's side just yet. Oh, Daniel definitely doesn't have the bench space unless he really is just banking on that Deoxys. Because Savo has a little bit of wiggle room if he, if he so chooses. Looks like he just discarded a Malamar there. I mean, these play, they play two rest of stretchers, so you can kind of um, be a little more fragile with your resources <laughs> right there Speaking in Speaking of which. Rescue stretcher here. It's kind of like how Zork used to play in the previous format. It had puzzle time. It had rest of stretcher. You, you could bend it, whatever you want. Uh, I don't need this now. I, if I want it later, I'll give you the puzzle time. No big deal. Big brain plates. We got this. Though keeping the two rescue stretchers did really help Daniel in that first game. That proved pivotal with keeping his attackers out of the discard. Mm -hmm. Put him right back on his bench. Gustavo was using one of his already, though he does have three. Brand new NK's on that bench. Lunala comes to this active spot in the spotlight now uh, and let him know that next turn, even if you chime a kill, I'm getting these ener energies on board. All right. Just looking through it now. I got that Ultra Ball. Sorry, it looks like it was in a discard. Sorry. Yeah, Malamar is coming in hot right now. Uh, two on the board for Danny here. Going to be able to set up those Deoxys, the Power Blast, if he opts to. Another Lily here, turn two. Going to get drawn Another additional four Lily. cards. Sorry, three cards. Shouldn't be too surprised. I guess both lists do run for them. I mean, they should be hitting them first turn, but it's incredible every time. Uh, looks like he uh, had to acrobike the way the Chimico um, and won't be able to use it here in game three unless he rescue stretches it back. Uh, but... Second recharge, power blast, 120 to Lunala. And this is actually a good move here because now even if uh, Lunala wants to use that full Moonstar attack, it's going to come out of cost of sacrificing itself. Of course. All right. So he does have that option to be actually evolving his Malamars up now, unlike both the previous games where he kind of had to wait a little bit. And we see that energy. Mm, maybe not. Debating about putting one of those psychic energies onto his bench in gay here. He's, he's applying it there because next turn after this Lunala gets KO'd, he's going to need a pivot Pokemon. So he wants to put the energy there. Hard retreat after you psychic recharge, and because uh, you can't bring the Deoxys active psychic recharge. Psychic recharge only goes to the bench when loading psychic energy to it. All right, and we get that. We get that Cynthia out from Daniel. Attaches another energy on his Deoxys Cynthia. Can't take that knockout. I'm going to Lanala now. 
still a very a very re reassuring knockout because now what happened is because of that pressure from the power blast, Gustavo after pr working to promote it to the active spot, getting net zero out of that Lunala because of the pressure that Danny applied through the power blast. So Tatch just looks like an escape board to that bench or a choreo as well, making sure nothing gets stuck in that active for any cost. So we want to kind of uh, take note here that he has Necrozma GX and Dongwings Necrozma both in his hand, and he is opting to just hold them um, but, and not bench them to the board right now. So loading up the Malamar with energy so he can retreat after this Deoxys potentially gets KO'd, and that way, similar to what Gustavo's doing through his Inke, can pivot, mainly retreat, recharge, and be able to KO whatever follows up on Gustavo's turn. Oh, he has a choice man though in hand and attaches it to the active one. All right, I guess he does already have the choice man on the bench to Yoxy, so can't put another one there, opting to get it out of hand so he doesn't draw back into it with that Cynthia. Great point there. You want to do the deck thinning as much as, as, much as possible, especially here in the finals. And you want to hit the cards you want and, and the cards you need, so you want to get rid of those that are not going to be too useful for you in this matchup. All right, so... He will be able to hit that Deoxys for weakness, provided he gets another energy on it. Um, even without, no, that Psychic is going to be doing 20 more damage times the amount of energy attack to your opponent's active Pokemon. His has two. He can just swing, take it out right then. Yep, that's the great thing about only needing the, needing the two energy on that Deox right now. Cause now he can be able to Psychic Recharge to something else or even mainly attach to a different Pokemon uh, if need be. Uh, so that he can set up more going further further in the game here. So Psychic probably going to be the choice here. Retreating that Inke and uh, taking a KO to put about five prizes just, uh, just as well as Daniel. I feel like this might be like the first time we've actually seen the Mimikyu on Gustavo's side. It's always Daniel with that Mimikyu, mm -hmm. always making that Mimikyu put in work. It's Gustavo. A great it's hidden in his deck. It's a great attacker in his mirror match, you know. So it's like the, it's, it's literally the additional attacker, uh, w whether it's Deoxys coming in, attacking Gustavo's side. Now you can use the copycat to copy the Psychic or Power Blast. So it's an additional. It's like a ditto. It, it, just, it just copies whatever he does in the opponent's side. Yeah, especially clean a matchup like this. And he is. Uh, we do apologize for the noise in the background. They are doing the teardown of the venue right now. Uh, but uh, looks like uh, there was the KO there. And, but Mimikyu in the active spot now. Just chill there. We see Daniel promote the Oricorio with the escape board. Just a, just a free retreater right there. And he does, he does have two of the Malamars online, so he can just attach and swing. And a third one now, so he's going to put at least two of them on. Oh, and three. Oh, the third one is from hand, though. He yep. still has a Psychic Recharge. If he so chooses to use it. I kind of like that option there because he knows he has the energy discard pile already and he wants to go ahead and just get the attachment right away. So now versus Psychic Recharging before the Cynthia, he can actually get another additional Pokemon and guarantee the energy versus banking off the Cynthia. So great order of operations from Daniel. Oh, very clean, very good. And haven't quite, quite gone to see his hand quite yet. I mean, he'll have, he has knocked out on that Mimikyu easy, but he is going to get return KO'd by Gustavo's Deoxys in return. So because Danny went first, right now the trade um, right now the trade is uh, going to be in his favor as far as a blow for blow right now. So unless Daniel um, so to kind of go to that point you made earlier, you know, whose who's buffet is going to end earlier and who's going to bench that first GX to get that KO. So uh, That's a really bad analogy that I made. Let's not, let's not keep reading. No, we're, we're running that all the way through. <laughs> until, <laughs> until the restaurant closes, we are running that buffet <laughs> joke, all right? Deox is coming to the active spot after the KO. <laughs> Psychic Recharge. Now he has three three Malamars on his side, so <laughs> it's a big party, and it's, who, it's who's going <laughs> to run out first. Well, it's really nice to see Gustavo actually get that opportunity to get those Malamars out and not just have a stuck GX as the attacker and kind of get those same opportunities that Daniel had to be able to play. It's a lot more even of a match to be. Fun walk. So Fun now that watch. we're at this point in the game, as far as mirrored board states, it's going to really come down to the resources that have been utilized earlier in the game. And one thing I want to note is that Gustavo already used a uh, rescue stretcher earlier. So that is one less down that he has in this matchup versus Daniel, who I believe still has both. So one thing to keep note there when it regards to bringing back these Mimikyus, bringing back these Deoxys, to kind of keep plowing through and, and uh, uh, setting up the strategy. 
Does he still have those chicks attackers in hand? If he so wishes. Let's see to the Cynthia, so they're probably not there anymore. Um, okay. Both lists with that Dawn Wings later on if they think that GX ability is clutch just so the opponent can't get that return KO. That's, we could see those come to play. That's very true. It could come down with those last two prizes where you could just kind of guarantee the first one and uh, do that attack and maybe uh, – if you, it, depending on who's wearing prizes, if Gustavo's two to one, he could use that Don Wings attack to protect himself mm -hmm. from the following turn. Gustavo just used his second rescue stretcher there for that Deoxys. It's energy from Tan that he is going to attach, and then Cynthia's here. I don't believe he has Psychic Recharge, any energies from the Malamars, so he does. He has done his manual attachment though. Yep, yep, fully there, and but we still have the yep, same. So the second recharges, so we are to load up this day at Deoxys here. Um, curious is he if he's actually gonna you know preemptively load up all of them on here to get the power blast set up. But he can actually get the KO with Psychic and potentially set up an additional energy on Malamar because Malamar. Uh, while we typically don't see the attack in this mirror match, uh, does have Psychic Sphere, three energy, 60 damage, so it can't hit 120 on those Psychic Weak Pokemon. And then even if we see... Ah, wait a second. One thing we got to keep in mind here, uh, Mimikyu does not have weakness, so he had to have used Power Blast to be able to get the KO because of that. Should remember that. That came, like, really into play with one of the earlier yep. games. Ended up getting a two-prize penalty, and it was not a great situation. I mean, I can understand why the players would make that mistake. Um, you have all these Psychic Attackers out here, and that, that case, too, the deck was Psychic Attackers. It looks like it would be weak to Psychic. Come on. Looks like there was a rescue stretcher to bring back Deoxys, Deoxys, Mimikyu, and then Ultra Ball discarding what looks to be uh, Escape Board and Marshadow to bring the Deoxys back to Danny's hand there. So... Um, while Gustavo was using a one for one, Danny able to pl pl pull through and get all three back into his deck, and, and then Ultra Lily Ball for the for one. Four right here. Double checks just to make sure. Looks like he might have a Guzma in hand here. Other than that, it is mostly a mystery. Ooh, mysterious treasure. Perhaps? No, mysterious treasure definitely a great card to have right now because even after if his Deoxys gets returned KO'd, able to grab another Deoxys and opts to do it right away. All right, definitely. Got more attackers on board. See, Gustavo has no rescue stretchers and only one attacker on board. I mean, they can still be in deck, but it's kind of putting him in a situation where he needs to be drawing them out. Or he's just going to be sick, swinging his squids. Interesting enough, he's loading all of them on the Deoxys. Not sure uh, about that last one. Oh, but he keeps it on. Just preserve energy for next time, though. I'd be, I mean, with the Malamars being able to hit it for weakness, I'd definitely be hesitant with overloading it. Absolutely there. I mean, yes, I can hit for weakness here um, as well. So we're going to see um, NK come to the active spot. Deoxys using Psychic, keeping all four energy on um, Gustavo. I think what Danny's thinking here is that if, if um, Gustavo does anything to disrupt my hand, I cannot get this Deoxys back to my bench. I have all four energy there now, so I can do uh, Psychic Blast, or sorry, Power Blast two times in a row without any problem. True, true. That way he has to... He has to deal with that Deoxys. He can't deal with anything else. The Deoxys is just going to run through his squids. One thing I want to keep in mind here is that Gustavo does have the Malamar in hand. It opts not to evolve it just yet. Malamar does have two retreat costs. So um, if he is able to, uh, if he were to evolve that first before retreating there, he would need additional energy. But Don Wings, Necrozma, GX. Looks like it's about to come down. And we will see that Moon's Eclipse GX play to hopefully Pull a catch-up play here for Gustavo. Uh, let's see if he opts to play it. I mean, he could he could Dark Flash and save it, save the 180 HP for something that's actually a little more worth it, especially since Dawn Wings won't be hitting a knockout. But it could be the only opportunity. I mean, this is going to – if he takes out that Malamar, he's going to be down to two prizes. Daniel doesn't return KO. He won't actually have that opportunity to Eclipse next turn. So moves the clips right now since he is ahead. He was ahead on prizes three to two, taking out the Malamar, and now it is a, he is immune to any attack. So Danny's going to need a Guzma here if he wants to take a prize this turn. And it looks like it is in hand. So uh, Guzma on any of the Malamars going to KO. While Gustavo will get the return KO, he would just need another uh, one more Guzma to finalize this game on Danny's side. All right, and he does Guzma in the Malamar with the energy on it. Thinking about putting Deoxys back out, and he does put it back out. Psychic oh. 
going to take out this Malamar, bring it down to one prize, and one prize left to beat a Memphis TCG regional champion. On to Gustavo's turn, what is Gustavo going to do to rally back into this here? Um, he does have Guzma, he can't take out the final Malamar. And that looks like what we're going to be eyeing down right now. And this is what it's going to come back to uh, why we loaded up that Deoxys. If these Ma Malamars started to get chained down like they are now, he would have no option to be able to re reload those Deoxys. 100%. Quickly puts the Guzma order. for the he game in Guzma. hand. He had it. Daniel Altavilla, t your regional champion here in Memphis, Tennessee. Bringing home the big check, the big money, the big bamboozle. Five Gs going with him home. Back to Florida. <laughs> that was an awesome match. Like the mirror matches can go either way, but that one was keeping us on our toes, especially with that Chimeco in play. We had the Lanala, the other side. I mean, all these little little texts just to make the game spicy. Yeah, I think in that ra in that game in particular, it really came down to Gustavo losing those two red stretches early, or using them earlier than Danny did, and at that point was forced to play the Dong using the Krasma versus keeping up with the 90X trade there. So um, big, big props to Danny there on resource management there, controlling his game here, and uh, very excited that we now have, after two long, grueling days, a regional champion here in Memphis. But great games by both guys, honestly. And I mean, top eight has honestly been astound like astonishing. It's been, it's been a great day. Absolutely here. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to take another brief pause. We're going to have a brief moment as we present the trophy, have an interview with Danny, your Memphis TCG regional champion. We'll be right, with, right back with you here soon. And we are back here with your Memphis, Tennessee, TCG Masters regional champion, Daniel Altavilla. I'm going to go ahead and do the first grace here and present with you the championship <laughs> trophy here. So, uh, two grueling days, lots of Pokemon to play. How are you feeling right now? Uh, I feel pretty good. I mean, you know, it's just like every other event. You know, you win some, you lose some, and today was my day, so I'm, I'm stoked. But, uh, you know, I feel happy for Gustavo, too. I'm, I'm happy for Rukan, who, who pretty much made the deck and worked so hard. And I'm just glad that everyone's work is, you know, is showing results. It, it means a lot to me. Absolutely. There. So, going through the game right now, we're in game one, uh, let loose. Gave Gustavo absolutely nothing right now. From there, you were able to chain KO and after KO. So what's going through your mind right now in that game one matchup? So game one was pretty unfortunate for Gustavo. Um, me winning the coin flip matters a lot in the mirror match because first KO, whoever can chain uh, better will win the game pretty much guaranteed. Uh, Gustavo starting Necrozma meant I had a free turn to slip up, and I was still able to, you know keep the keep the lead in the prize race because he has a two prizer there so it felt pretty good um yeah it really game one was pretty much just a wash just because of his start and his setup he didn't know in k turn one i mean yeah i mean and he also didn't help today he started with the gx right now exactly, the spot yeah. across the gx there and you were able to get the easy ko and take yeah. a huge lead right there well how we saw in game three it was kind of single prize for single prize and that game one you had an immediate advantage um game two however though a little bit of the back foot there wasn't able to grab that one there he was able to power through get set up through lunala gx and kind of get his board rolling there so how are you feeling right now uh, yeah, so based on game two, uh, Gustavo was able to uh, obviously have the, the best start that he could with the Lunala, and he was able to get around the Chimeco, which was really just a stall tactic at that point because yeah. I'm trying to set up and my, my draws were, were very poor game two. So game two was pretty much the reverse of game one. Absolutely there. And now we're to close and bring it to close. Game three, both players are setting up, shooting fire right now. And I want to kind of bring up two crucial Three crucial things that I kind of point out there. The first thing is your approach to go actively at that Lunala Prism Star uh, to be able to apply that pressure there. What's going through your mind at that point? Um, so I didn't want to, I didn't want to like, well, first of all, I don't even think I had a Guzma. But even if I did, I was thinking, okay, I'm going first. The only way I can screw this up is if he gets a full moon, or Moon's Eclipse GX and then I... Uh, I don't have the Guzma or the escape rope to answer it. So, because mm -hmm. uh, that's what he did to me in Swiss. So it's like I'd rather just you know play it safe, and then from there I knock out the Lunala. Maybe he has trouble setting up Malamars, which mm -hmm. he kind of did, and then uh, from there it's just smooth sailing. So for and, and the second thing I want to note too um, uh, is that I was keeping track of the, uh, the pace of play there as far as you know tagger for tagger for tagger, and you're in the upper hand going first. And a big thing there is early in the game, I think between his first two turns, one stretcher was gone to the bin immediately yeah. to bring back some resources. So immediately, you're in the upper hand. Was that noted in your play going forward? Um, so the stretcher thing was sort of noted, but it actually, like, Gustavo can pretty much do whatever he wants 
and it doesn't really matter because all I have to do is be able to find an answer for it. Mm -hmm. So um, even with the stretcher and the discard, it's not like I was thinking, oh, he only has so many attackers, I can only do this, whatever. It, it, what really mattered was that I was able to have an attacker every turn and that when I used my own stretcher, it would be to shuffle in a Deoxys because I had a ball card in hand to, gra to grab a Deoxys out. That's what was going to keep me in the lead. Absolutely agree there. So now both stretches gone to the bin. You use actually yours during the game to bring back all three back Pokemon and Ultra Ball immediate turn to get that Deoxys yeah. power blast away to, to, to seal the game and pretty much, you know, solidify yourself as the master uh, regional champion here. Uh, any plugs you want to do left before we close it out? A uh, huge shout out to Dead Draw Gaming. Absolutely love them. Uh, it was it was a really big move for me to go from my last sponsor over to Dead Draw, and I don't regret it one bit. Everyone is actually a team, and it, it really is a huge change, so I love that. And I just think that uh, even though the format isn't really healthy right now, that I think I just want to shout out to Rukan and shout out to Caleb Gedimer, shout out to Isaiah, just everyone who who was helping me, you know, prepare for this event. And like I said earlier, it, it's the hard work is 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 happening and it's actually turning into something. The Absolutely. hard work is actually paying off, and yep. that's that means the world to me. Absolutely there, Will. Kratz, yet again, the hard work paying dividends here in the form of a TCG Regional Championship. Yet again, another one under your belt. Congrats again, and thank you guys for being with us. We're here at LGN, uh, and we'll be back with you guys here at the next Regional. Thank you very much.